Why do so many people consider Malaga one of the best places to live, work, and invest? Perhaps it's the low cost of living, you suppose, with a high quality of life. But I think that it has more to do with the fact that uh, Malaga is an entrepreneurial smart city surrounded by innovative ecosystem called Malaga Valley, where this historical heritage and technology meet to improve the quality of life for everyone. The most notable aspect of Malaga Valley are our technology park with 626 companies and 16,800 people working there. More than 40 smart city pilot projects developed by multinational company and by municipal company and by a startup. Uh, for example, uh, Malaga was chosen by the Japanese government, Mitsubishi Motor, Hitachi, and Spanish government, and uh, Endesa, to develop a pioneering electrical mobility project called Zero Emission Mobility to All, with 200 electric vehicles and uh, vehicle to grid charge station around the city, like uh, Ernesto Chiora this uh, evening, this afternoon, uh, tell us some minutes ago. Apart from the University of Malaga, with 36,000 students, the metropolitan area of Malaga is home to more than 15 international schools using the educational system from the United Kingdom, France, Germany, Ukraine, Norway, Finland, Sweden, and other countries. The most important Spanish software of business incubator and accelerator with a capacity for almost 300 staff. And especially, the attractiveness to live, work, and invest in a wonderful city. Malaga is a city with 600,000 inhabitants and a metropolitan population of one million people is a southern European hub on the Mediterranean Sea. I would like to highlight some of the advantages Malaga offers entrepreneurs and business people. Office rent is a quarter, uh, a quarter of the cost of to an equivalent space in central London. In general, the cost of living is cheaper compared to other European cities. According to Eurobarometer survey in January, 2016 Malaga ranks in the top uh, 10 European city with the best quality of life and the, is the only Spanish city. It is a very well-connected city. The Malaga International Airport, the four in Spain in number of passengers, has two runways, direct flights to 142 destinations in 31 countries and receives more than 14, uh, 14 million passengers a year. Malaga is also connected by sea and high-speed rail. The city boasts over 3,000 years of monumental heritage and an extensive network of more than 30 museums. For example, the Picasso Museum, the Contemporary Art Center, the Center Pompidou, Carmen Tissi Museum, and the collection of the Russian Museum in St. Petersburg. I have here a map of Malaga Valley. Uh, you can see the special condition. Eh? Mediterranean Sea, the mountain, the uh, ski station of Sierra Nevada, the Gulf country, 50 country golf uh, in, the, in the coast, the possibility of sailing in the sea, and all the uh, entrepreneur, entre, entrepreneurship in this uh, special, special territory, special land. Uh, I don't want to extend more, but I hope that you all have a better understanding of how, how our city has created a successful, innovative ecosystem for entrepreneurs. The city has uh, all the amenities of a major European capital without the traffic, of, the traffic pollution, nor stress. In conclusion, an excellent, an excellent work-life balance makes Malaga an ideal place to live, work, and invest. Uh, the City Council is ready to help you, and we offer a variety of uh, soft landing service. I sincerely hope that you will consider Malaga as the best city to grow uh, your business and moreover, choose to live there someday. Thank you very much for your attention, and I hope to see you soon in Malaga. So let's move from the Iberian Peninsula up to the Baltic. Uh, 
Tell us what's going on in the Estonian startup ecosystem. First, I'd like to ask you all, all of you a question, actually. Uh, uh, how many of you would like to have an extra week of time each year? Uh, I'm asking because this is what the Estonian digital governance is actually giving you. An extra week every year for spending with your family or, or building your company. And I'd like to l explain a little bit wh why that works. Uh, uh, it's been estimated that uh, all of the digital uh, services of uh, Estonia uh, in total, they give one extra week for every working age adult in Estonia. And uh, for example, if Tim Draper would have sent uh, his papers over with FedEx to Estonia be, to be signed by Thunderbean, it would take many days. And uh, from a uh, personal perspective, if I had had to when my daughter was born last year, I had to go to city council and wait in the line to register her birth and ask for the, uh, you know, all the support I should be getting from the city government. It would have taken a few hours, but I was able to do that, all that online. Last but not least, uh, uh, just to creating a company and actually takes you half an hour online. I know because I've done it myself. But this is not the only reason uh, that you should uh, choose Estonia, when you're uh, starting up a company in Europe, I will bring, uh, bring you three other reasons. First of them is um, value for money. Uh, the rent prices uh, are 10 times lower in Estonia than in, in San Francisco. Uh, tech talent is uh, three to five times cheaper, and it takes uh, around one month to find tech talent, which is uh, much better than the average here or in the rest of European Union. Uh, so you really get uh, longer and luster with, uh, with your seed round, for example. Uh, second reason is uh, that uh, the support from government is strong. Uh, it's been estimated or found out that 65% uh, uh, of uh, startups in Estonia are supportive of what the government does. The, uh, the global average is 25%, so we definitely do something better. One example is that uh, we don't, uh, you know, punish or ban companies like Uber that are trying to change the economies. Instead, we connect them to our digital uh, uh, system so that they can uh, uh, provide their service in Estonia. And last but not least, uh, some of your friends are already there. The back offices of Skype, TransferWise, Pipedrive, there's already a vibrant economy there and everyone's welcome to join that. Uh, from next year, we will have Startup Visa, another thing that's been developed uh, in, in government and, and startup collaboration. Uh, take your visa, come to our uh, Latitude 59 biggest tech conference, and take a longer time to be in Estonia so you can uh, save up more of your own time. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you, Meek. So let, let's move over to sunny Ireland. Yeah, Michael O'Connor. Michael O'Connor, please tell us what's going on in Cork and also yeah. the view from EBAN, European Business Angel Network. On. Yeah, I'll start with Europe and then zero down into uh, Cork and Ireland. Uh, Europe is uh, quite buoyant uh, at the moment, and uh, especially for startups. And it's a wonderful place to do a very early stage startup. A lot of very good technical people. Um, they stay, they don't uh, move around a lot, uh, which is very good. And, the and there's a very strong links to the university, and there's a lot of research going on in the university and universities, and a lot of that research is funded by the European Commission, and it spins out into these companies, and then the European Commission also gets involved in providing funding programs and um, initiatives to actually drive that on. Now, sitting behind that is the European Business Angel Network, which is um, a group of about 100, 120 business angel networks throughout Europe. And that is linking now to accelerators. There's about 100 accelerators in Europe that actually invest in companies, take equity investment. And so a lot of the new trends now are these um, accelerators linking with, uh, with angel networks. Now, on top of that, we've started an initiative called the e-accelerator, which adds corporates to that. Airbus is a corporate partner, for example. And what that does now is to actually merge or integrate uh, accelerators with angel networks to actually get that funding in at a very early stage of the company acceleration process. Uh, so in June, we ran the FinTech Accelerator in um, 
demo day in Luxembourg, in the headquarters of BMP in downtown Luxembourg. Uh, next week, or this week, we're running a uh, accelerator demo day in Cologne, which is the headquarters of the insurance business in, in Europe, or one of the headquarters. So Europe is quite active, it's quite buoyant. Um, it does need those international linkages into the United States, which is what this event is primarily about and so, so important. So it's a question of um, the companies in Europe from the smaller countries actually sometimes do better than the larger companies because they have to go global day one. And that brings us around to Ireland, which is a country of four million people. And it's very, very active in the startup area and it's got very strong links to the United States. As an example, you can clear customs and immigration in Ireland before traveling to the United States in the same way as you can in Canada or other close locations, the United States uh, around Europe. So it's, it's, um, what is happening now is that uh, in Ireland, there's a, probably 100 startups a year that are funded by the government and, um, and, they, and they grow and there's significant, um, a very early stage benefit packages to help those companies get going with a series of accelerators. So there's a buoyancy there, um, and the smaller countries force this going global very early on and, and force the attitude to think globally and bring in global startup talent. So this year we're running the Startup Nation Summit in Cork with the Global Entrepreneurship uh, Network and that will bring in uh, companies from around the world into what is a, a global investor challenge where in investors will come in and companies will come in, very early stage companies, to get um, uh, basically mentored, advised, um, boot camped over three or four days before actually deciding whether to go forward or not. Thank you, Michael. And Penny, you're based here in the Bay Area representing London Partners. Uh, London's kind of the, the, the big gorilla here on, on the block in terms of European startups. Uh, tell us about what's, what's happening or new things emerging on the London tech scene. Thanks. Thanks very much for inviting me to be on the panel today. It's fascinating to listen to my uh, colleagues and the great things that are happening in the various um, tech clusters around um, other cities in Europe. Um, in terms of London, um, we are the fourth largest tech ecosystem now in the world and the largest digital tech cluster in the whole of Europe. Um, we're also one of the most open, diverse, and dynamic city, um, city economies of the world and um, just recently won first place again in the PwC City of Opportunity um, Award for Business, Finance, and Culture. Um, in terms of our cluster in, in London, we have about 40,000 or so tech uh, digital companies, which has actually increased by about 50% in the last five years. And we have about 200,000 people employed in that sector. And as a, a portion of our economy, it equates to about $44 billion for the UK's economy. Um, over the last few years, we've seen a, a huge increase in VC funding, which has definitely helped this very dynamic cluster. Um, just at the first six months of this year, we had about $1.3 billion of uh, VC funding into um, the UK's economy. And uh, even since the, the Brexit referendum, we had about 42 deals and about $200 million of funding. So um, it's, it's looking very optimistic and, and still very healthy. Um, a few examples of companies that you may be familiar with are Dark Trace and City Mapper and Student.com. Um, in terms of scale-ups, which is the kind of the big theme, um, you know, here at the conference, certainly during London Technology Week um, earlier in this year in June, um, it is very much the UK and, and London have a huge focus on scaling up and sort of supporting measures to, to help start up companies. Um, we have um, now been ranked as Europe's number one city for scale ups. Um, we're, we're also ranked the best place to start a digital business. And there's an EY report that just came out a few days ago. And um, in terms of the 47 unicorns that we have in Europe, 14 of those were actually produced. In London, we have one of them in the room today, Blipper, um, and uh, other companies include Funding Circle and um, Just Eat and TransferWise. So we kind of look at all of this great stuff and all these great stats and sort of data. You know, what are the reasons why um, that sort of London is such a unique place that has been able to kind of produce all this very, very healthy growth? And we, we tend to sort of see or, pre or, or kind of present London really very much in terms of its uniqueness as a city of convergence. Um, in, in terms of kind of leading 
the world and, and leading Europe for uh, innovators, um, incubators, accelerators. We have about 100 of them now in London. And what's been really interesting over the last few years has been watching the emergence of specific verticals emerge. So we now have fintech um, accelerators, we have medtech, we have cybertech, we have property tech, we have um, edtech, we have travel tech. It, the list really does go on. Um, and, and in terms of that sort of ecosystem, if you think about London, if you've been to London, you can literally just jump in a cab and get to, you know, a partner, a client. Um, you can get to the professional service companies which support London's ecosystem in terms of the growth very, very easily. Uh, we have 250 international banks in London. We actually have more international banks in London than, than they do in New York. Um, and 40% of the world's um, leading companies have their EHQs based there. So there really is this very, very strong kind of cluster which helps the ecosystem grow. Um, in, in terms of kind of the reasons why if we kind of look a little bit more deeply, um, some of the themes I always find to tend to, to emerge, and they're very, very strong themes across all the cities, you know, throughout Europe's ecosystem. Um, but in London, we, we, we kind of present our kind of, some of our kind of key three strengths as being the talent and the market, and then actually the business environment as well, which is incredibly important. Um, in terms of talent, we, we really are the most diverse and international global city, certainly in Europe, if not the world. We have over 200 languages spoken. Um, we have four of the world's top universities um, in London, and uh, it really is a great place which attracts both students and senior execs to either launch or then grow their careers. People want to live and, and, and work in London. Um, for those of you that aren't aware, even now at earlier stages, coding is actually taught as part of the national curriculum in elementary schools, which is a, a fantastic thing. So we're kind of starting very early, and it's very much being um, kind of embedded as part of the DNA for, for the UK. And in terms of developers, we have a huge um, cluster of about 71,000 developers in London and companies, you know, from the valley like... Um, Facebook and Google and, and up in Seattle, Amazon have very large developer centers there as well. So there's a lot, there's a lot of kind of attraction and, and, and ease in which to find talent in London. And it's actually a lot cheaper to hire a developer in London than it is in the Valley. It's about 25% cheaper with a, with a lower churn as well. In terms of the market, the UK is a big market. You know, we have 64 million people, um, 8.5 million people in London. We're, we lead London. We, we lead Europe for e-commerce. Um, the UK market is a very um, kind of early adopter uh, market. We're very tax sev ta tech savvy. 75% um, of Londoners have smartphones. 92% of Brits use the internet. So there's a, a great opportunity for companies to come and grow business and scale, um, and uh, you know find a great market there. And then lastly, from a business environment perspective. Um, we have a favorable time zone, the language, legal um, system is, is similar to the, to the U.S., and ease of getting into the EMEA market as well. Um, we have a very supportive uh, government with um, ease of access to the regulatory uh, bodies. We have low corporation tax, the lowest of the G7, and uh, some great initiatives as well around um, incentives for um, IP and uh, an R&D, R&D tax credits, et cetera. Thank you, Penny. Support, yeah. are, are Thank you. That's it. Um, um, so, for each of you, what is the leading startup or tech conference in your region that people here should think about attending? You know, because tech conferences are often the best way to bring people and get them familiar with the local ecosystem. Francisco, what is the best tech conference in Malaga? Tech call conference. Conference. In Malaga or Spain? So if you want to attract people to come visit you in Malaga, interested in the tech sector, what conference should they be, be attending in Madrid or in Malaga or España to come and see what you're doing? ¿Cuál es la mejor conferencia sobre tecnología o emprendimiento o innovación en España, en Madrid o en Malaga o Barcelona? In Malaga we have, uh, we have two... Uh, for the, the um, trust fear is a very interesting uh, meeting. It's in February, it's all the year, uh, about the traffic, the create innovation, the, uh, um, uh, create the culture of innovation in the entrepreneur. 
uh, uh, the, the knowledge of the uh, university at the center of research must to be to avoid to the uh, entrepreneur. It's necessary that all the entrepreneurs understand the importance of to expand in innovation. No? And also in, in Malaga, Green City is in October, is the, uh, the possibility to find uh, the answer of the uh, a challenge of the city at that moment uh, about the, the embodiment question. No, perhaps also in Barcelona you have the mobile uh, congress uh, is important. The question of the and uh, February. technology. In February. February we have also yes. in, in Malaga in other town. When? 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 The, the connection, the internet for the scene uh, the, uh, is uh, permanent in, 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 uh, and doing, no? is uh, uh, working. But uh, Congress or Conference, I remember two in Malaga, uh, Transfer and Green City, and also the Congress of Mobile in Barcelona. Okay, thank you very much. Mick, Estonia. Latitude 59, remember it. Next year it's in, in the end of May. Latitude 59 in Tallinn, you're going to enjoy it. So who came to speak? Who are the, the top speakers at Latitude 59 this year? This year, Tim Draper was there to, to tell us about uh, what he thinks about innovation. Uh, uh, and uh, yes, uh, that was the keynote this year. And who is the chief organizer for Latitude 59? Enterpri Enterprise Estonia and Startup no, Estonia. No, which person? You can talk to me. I thought it was Andres Virg. Andres? Yes, uh, Andres is uh, here throughout the year. And, uh, yes, so Andres is the representative of Enterprise yes. Estonia here in Silicon Valley. Michael, you mentioned Cork as the center of a new startup conference in Ireland. Uh, yeah, in, in um, November there is the Startup Nations Summit uh, where countries from around the world will meet and startups will come. And so there's a, a, a challenge there for them to come and pitch. And, uh, and that will be held on November the 18th, 19th, 20th. Um, and uh, that will be very good. And, uh, and there generally is a conference that time of year in Cork. Cork is the uh, headquarters of Apple outside of the United States and obviously been subject to controversy re recently, which we won't go further on. Okay, thank you. Um, and just to remind those of you, uh, Lisbon, so the Web Summit is now taking place in Lisbon this year, November 7 through 10. Penny, what's the major tech conference in London that people absolutely must attend? Is it TechCrunch Disrupt London? TechCrunch Disrupt's taking place later this year, actually in December, but the one I'd highly recommend is London Technology Week. It's taking place next year, the week of June 12th. It's a week-long festival of tech events akin to London Fashion Week, but for tech. Um, this year, we're probably going to expect about 100,000 people. Um, we, we, last year, or this, this earlier year, we had about 45,000 people, but this year it's going to be absolutely huge. So we're talking about a mega conference. So. Great. Thank you so much. Uh, please join me in thanking our panelists, Meet, Francisco, Penny, and Michael. Thank you.